Today I'm going to show you my top 5 new features of Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. I've been using version 2 now for over a week and I love it. I think it's a big step up. There's tons of new features. Here's my current top 5 and it will probably change, but these are the new features that really stood out for me. So let's get into it. The first thing you'll notice when you open up Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad is that the user interface, the UI, has been redesigned. And it's quite a big redesign actually. It's more than just colored icons. You'll notice the icons are now colored. It used to be black and white. And to be honest, I preferred the old icons, but I don't mind these. They're just icons at the end of the day. And no matter what an icon is, you get used to it after a while. But it does bring the user interface in line with Affinity Photo for the desktop. One of the issues with Affinity Photo, the desktop, and the iPad version was quite different and the iPad arguably had more quirks and it took a bit longer to get your head around how to use the iPad version. And thankfully that's now not the case because not just color icons, but they've removed the selections persona. There was a photo persona and a selections persona in Affinity Photo 1 for the iPad. And now really they've combined all that into one persona and there's not a lot of flicking between the two personas. If you watched any of my videos, especially on my compositing videos, there was a lot of flicking between personas, and when you click between personas, all the icons down the left-hand side changed. You can still change the personas by clicking the Affinity Photo icon. There's still Liquify, Develop, Tonal Mapping, and if you go into Liquify, you'll see what I mean. The icons change, the studios over here in the right hand side change and the toolbar on the left hand side changes also and we'll maybe look at that in another video. But thankfully now everything's in one place and that makes my workflow, my compositing a lot easier and an absolute joy <laughs> just to sound a wee, a wee bit excited and you'll see in videos coming up it just makes it just makes life so much easier. If you're just picking up a Finley Photo 2, it makes it much easier if you're coming from the desktop. And it's not even that they combine those two personas. They've also moved the contextual toolbar. If you remember in version one, the contextual toolbar was at the bottom when you clicked into any of these tools. If I click into it now, you'll see nothing appears at the bottom, but up here, just like a Finley Photo on the desktop, and we'll maybe type something very quickly. It's an autumn looking picture, so we'll type autumn. We're gonna highlight the text, and again, instead of this contextual toolbar appearing at the bottom, it's at the top, and this is really, really nice. This is more in keeping with Affinity Photo on the desktop, and if you're coming from a, dare I say, Photoshop background, you'll also be used to this menu at the top bar. A wee bit different, obviously, than Photoshop, but it's a great addition. Another brilliant user interface change is up in the top right hand corner, there's three new icons. The first is zooming in, you can pinch in and out on the iPad and if you wanna get it back to full scale, just hit the magnifying glass or there's a wee drop down where you can zoom it in to 100% or 400% or whatever you want or fit to zoom. And at any stage, if you click on that icon, it'll fit into zoom. Snapping is always something that I have turned on and that is absolutely brilliant just to be able to have it up there before it was hidden away in one of these menus. And then over here, there's another icon where you can go in, you can add the grid and guides and different things there. In other videos, we'll look at these things, but for now, that's just a very quick overview. It's not a very quick overview. There's one more thing, Andrew, you forgot to do. If you go to paintbrush, these here sliders now appear in the left hand side and we'll quickly make a new pixel layer and we'll maybe choose a nice orangey color and if i do some squiggles it doesn't look great but for the purposes of the video you can move now these sliders on the left hand side. I do illustrations in Procreate and it's lovely to have something similar to Procreate or something familiar. You can change this here is for the flow. If you even click in these, uh, if you even click in the dot, this dot you'll see changes the option. This is hardness. So we can change it to a very hard brush, change it to it's very, very soft. And again, likewise up here, you can change the opacity of the brush and this looks awful, but just for the purposes of showing you the brush, this is really, really nice. And I'm gonna hit two fingers 
to undo all this. There's other user interface changes too that we'll come on to in later videos, but that's just a few of the main differences that certainly I've noticed and all of them's very, very welcome. If you hold down, you've got a wee sub menu with lots of different options, more options than you did in Affinity Photo 1. Also three fingers. If you put three fingers down, this menu will come up and that's even quicker than holding down or at least it is to me. Another cool thing in Affinity Photo 2 is, and I suppose this is UI related in a way, is this wee dot here. And it, if you click on it, it controls the Option, Command and Shift keys. And I'm left-handed, so if you hold down this wee dot, you can actually move it anywhere in the screen. I'm gonna move it over here. I'll be working with my Apple Pencil and this pen, and then I'll click this wee dot here. And what that does really, it does a number of different things and we'll look into that more in another video coming up at some stage. But just for the purposes of this video, if we click into our autumn text, we'll use the wee shift icon. And now if we rotate it, it's actually rotating the autumn text in 15 degrees segments. If we take that off and try to use the rotate, we can rotate it as much or as little as we want two fingers will undo it. And if you're used to the last version, you can still rotate it and hit one finger down. It just means you have to keep one finger down all the time, whereas this way, it's nearly hands-free and we can do it like that. There's other options. If we click the command icon, this will now scale the autumn text or any asset from the dead center. And that's very nice too. Again, you can use two fingers to do that by simply clicking the command tool that will pull it from the center. And we'll revisit this and there's lots of other different things this can do. But for the time being, we'll just tap the icon away and away it goes. I've opened up a new photo for this next tip and all these photos I'm using in the tutorial today is from unsplash.com. They're completely free to use. You'll find the link in the description below. So feel free to download them and follow along if you wish. We'll just click the text and what will we write here? We'll just write winter. This looks a bit winterish. Again, the menu up here is a fantastic welcome. Let me just scale that up and then snap and it's not turned on on this project. We'll just turn it on again so that's us nicely in the middle. And if we go to the filters studio on the right hand side, we can click live filters and if we scroll down to mesh warp, this is really, really cool. So now I'm just going to maybe do something that mightn't look great, but just try to keep it in with the, the northern lights. We'll maybe see if we can... This, this isn't looking great. This isn't some of my finest work, but it'll just maybe... I like that. I'll maybe make the point. And that looks okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if it looks okay. But the point is, seeing it is a live filter, a live mesh warp filter, we can click into it and we can change it up again. So if we weren't too happy or maybe the client comes back to us saying, we're not quite sure about the way this has turned out, Andrew, we can change it. And like all clients, they're gonna make it probably worse. Not only that, we can double tap into it and we can change it. We can change it to something else. And that looks quite cool. Snow, because there's a bit of snow in the trees and you could even superimpose a bit of snow although two fingers to undo i do prefer the winter text but that's mess warp and that's really nice and i know i'll be using that in the future a very handy way you can even duplicate it and duplicating again three fingers down we're going to duplicate it this way and then you can even say winter and then let me have a wee look what can we write here winter is coming that's going to be too big so we can scale it down a wee bit and even scale the text down. And again, just like in the last version, we can use our finger or we can use the plus and minus. And that's maybe not a great font to choose because it's cutting out a G, but you can see very quickly, 
again to select multiple layers we can click one layer and then click the other one and that will duplicate it and if we had our proper G you could see that's that's quite nice and we can write more things duplicate the text and uh, that's very handy and it's going to come in useful for me for this here example we've got a coffee mug again from unsplash.com link in the description if I hit one finger and paste I have pasted this logo or I've copied this logo sorry from my browser and it's Mr Fusion if you don't know what Mr Fusion is Marty and Doc will tell you Mr Fusion is a course from Back to the Future 2 my favorite film if you're new to the channel and if you're not you know all about that so for Mr Fusion to go in this coffee mug we're going to do something similar to the last tip we're going to click live filters scroll down to mesh warp we're going to do something seemingly very similar and I'm just gonna for the purposes of this tutorial I'm gonna just exaggerate I know it's not quite correct and I'm gonna go into the layer studio I'm gonna click these three dots and just change the blend mode to darken so it kind of looks as if it's on the cup it's not too neat and tidy and you might be thinking Andrew that's similar to the last tip the last tip you use text in the mesh warp now you're using a picture but we're going to go one further we're going to do a bar and we'll maybe we'll maybe make this red and we'll go into the layer studio we'll bring this red bar to the right hand side and like magic that red bar has now took the form of the mesh warp and we're going, we're going to make it a bit thinner and you can really see it's staying true to what the mesh warp is again I've over, over egged it a wee bit because uh, it's, it's not really dipping that much but just for the example of the video we can even duplicate this there's a few different ways of duplicating it here's, an, here's another way and we'll bring that down here and that is really cool you can even put text we'll maybe add text very quickly what will we write we will write doc because it could be doc's coffee who knows and again it is taking the form so we can add things into this mesh warp and that is really nice again you can just see the way it's deforming that and this could be used in a lot of circumstances this here is horrible it doesn't look great but it makes the point and this is very exciting for this last tip I've imported a picture of my kids on their way to school for the first day of school there's a video I've made all about this feel free to check it out this photo was made completely in Affinity Photo 1 on the iPad. For the purposes of this tip, I thought I'd come back to it because it's really nice. And I'm going to add some text and I will add in what we'll write very quickly. I'll add in back to school. I will center align it. I'll move it up here. Again, if we go into the text, the menus at the top where we can make lots of changes and you might be thinking Andrew white's not really the color to make it stand out and that's not even probably the ideal font we'll very quickly choose a font that maybe looks just a wee bit cooler or certainly a wee bit different back to school and the tip I want to show you is in the layer effects studio if we go to outline we can select our outline again it's not down here it's up at the top and we'll maybe make this a black border we can now change the stroke value or the outline value down here and that looks okay but what affinity photo 2 now you can do is if we hit this plus icon we'll get another outline so beforehand this was a bit annoying because you'd have to maybe write the text do the outline, rasterize the text, make another outline. Now, if we make this, we'll maybe make it this nice blue jumper color. And if we bring up the text or bring, we'll bring this one up. We'll click on this outline and bring this up a wee bit now. And now that is starting to look pretty cool. We can even click another outline and we'll change this maybe to the yellow here 
and we'll bring this down. So it's bringing in the school colours. Why don't we make that a wee bit more, a wee bit more yellowy? And that's that's really really cool. And it's it's uh it's it's maybe a simple technique, but it's something that you couldn't do on the last version of Affinity Photo. I'm curious to know how many outlines we're gonna do before we break it. And I wasn't going to do this, but this this just hit a few just to see what happens. We're gonna scroll down. There's absolutely tons. If someone slows down this video, they can count. There's tons and tons and tons and tons, and we'll keep on going. Goodness knows how many there is. If you need to use that many outlines in your text or in your project, let me know in the comments below and let me know what you're working on because it would be something absolutely amazing. But that's really, really nice. And it's simple, but it's something that would have been a lot of effort and a lot of work to do in the last time again you would have to rasterize the text and what's great about this is you can go back to school we can change the text and it's still keeping the outlines so back to school maybe i forgot to add a few explanation marks and there you go really really nice you can change all this text brilliant so there you have it let me know in the comments below what's your favourite feature of Affinity Photo 2. Was it one of the ones I showed or maybe it was something different? There's going to be lots more tutorials coming out on Affinity Photo 2 and the iPad. I'm nearly going to have to do the whole back category now because uh, a whole new app means a whole new different way of doing things. But that's grand. I look forward to doing that. So if you haven't already done so, please like this video. Please subscribe to watch all these future videos of mine coming out. Let me know if you're going to watch the Football World Cup or the Soccer World Cup where you are in the world. Northern Ireland's not in it unfortunately, so I'll be cheering someone else on or maybe just sitting back enjoying the show. Let me know if you were performing it and who you're rooting for. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.